What's going on, family? I'm just here to remind you that you can get yourself a copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4 of the Caribbean, by visiting my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com, and help support me as I continue on my mission to make sure that my people have our information, even though, you know, there are many people trying to stop us from learning our history. But hey, we can teach ourselves. And one of the tools we can use is my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. Remember, visit my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com to get your copy. And I appreciate your support. The father of the Delta Blues, Charlie Patton. The blues is one of America's oldest, most prominent, and alluring forms of music. The blues was created by black Americans who were formerly enslaved, but still lived in oppressive conditions. It was a form of musical expression that portrayed the raw emotions black Americans expressed because of the conditions they lived in. Charlie Patton was born in April of 1891 in Hines County, Mississippi, but was raised in Sunflower County, Mississippi, within the Mississippi Delta. Bill and Annie Patton were Charlie's parents. Though many believe that Patton's father was a man named Henderson Chapman, a formerly enslaved black man who fathered many musicians. Charlie Patton was five feet five inches tall, fair skinned and believed to be of black American and Native American ancestry. Stories exist about Patton being of Cherokee or Choctaw tribes. The Cherokee claim is believed because Patton made the song Down in the Dirt Road Blues about visiting Cherokee tribes. 1897 was the year that the Patton family moved from Sunflower County, Mississippi to the Dockery Plantation in Ruleville, Mississippi. Moving to Ruleville, Mississippi would prove to be a pivotal decision in Patton's life. Henry Sloan is the name of a legendary Mississippi Delta musician and the man that influenced Charlie Patton's style of music. Henry Sloan created the foundation for what we know as Mississippi Delta Blues. Patton learned a lot about music and Mississippi Delta Blues from Sloan. Soon after, Patton was making a name for himself within the Mississippi Delta. He quickly became one of the most talented and popular blues artists in the Delta. He would travel from plantation to plantation performing and gaining notoriety. He would begin to forge friendships with fellow Delta blues legends such as Howlin' Wolf, Willie Brown, Fiddlin' Joe Martin, Tommy Johnson, and Robert Johnson. Because he was older than these musicians, he would become a mentor to them. Patton's talent and popularity grew to where he was invited to perform all over the South, New York, Chicago, and throughout the United States. His performance schedule was unusual at the time for a Delta blues player because he had consistent scheduled performances, a performance schedule that others would soon adopt. Patton was a very talented musician. Not only was he a master of playing Mississippi Delta blues, but he could also masterfully play various genres of music, including ballads and what is considered hillbilly songs. Showmanship is an attribute that was used to describe Patton as a performer. While playing the guitar, Patton would dramatically drop to his knees, then swing the guitar behind his head and his back, continuing to play effortlessly as the crowds roared in amazement. Many believe Patton created the foundation for rock and roll. Patton's influence could be heard and seen in the way Delta musicians and musicians of other genres played their chords and their stage presence, some mimicking Patton's dance moves and guitar swinging. Patton's voice was very influential as well. It is said that Patton's voice could be heard from 500 yards away with no microphone. A number of people believe he influenced the way Howlin' Wolf used his voice. In 1933, Patton and his common-law wife Bertha Lee moved to Holly Ridge, Mississippi. Their relationship was not a healthy relationship. They were combative with each other, which resulted in them being incarcerated. Patton's career was not as long and successful as it could have been due to the way black artists were exploited during the early 1900s. His final recording session was from January through February of 1934. He would die on April 28, 1934 of a heart condition. Patton's death was not reported by any news outlets and his legacy was all but forgotten until his music and legacy were rediscovered, but his influence was already imprinted on the music industry. Considered the father of the Delta Blues, Charlie Patton was responsible for contributing to over 54 music recordings between 1929 and 1934. Patton's Screaming and Hollering the Blues, the words of Charlie Patton, was packaged and re-released to the public in 2001 winning three Grammy Awards in 2003. In 2006, Patton's song, 
Pony Blues was added to the National Recording Preservation Board of the Library of Congress. The documentary American Epic was released in 2017, depicting Patton's life. He was included into the Blues Hall of Fame in 2006 and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2021. This is the story of Mr. Charlie Patton. The world of music stands on your shoulders. For more information, make sure y'all visit my website at www.ontheshoulders1.com. There, you can purchase a copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com backslash OTSOG. You can hit that super like button up under this video and uh, make sure you catch the next video that's coming up. Love y'all.